Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reason We Learn. I'm your host, Deb Philman. At The Reason We Learn, we aspire to be part of the solution. The purpose of this show is to take a good, honest, potentially painful look at the way kids are being educated. We know we can do better, and this is where we'll talk about how. Let's learn something. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reason We Learn. So glad you've joined me today for a wonderful conversation with our Common Core diva, Lynn Taylor. Before we get to that, I want to ask you, please, if you're new to the channel and interested in being part of the solution to our education crisis, I hope you'll subscribe to be notified when I make new content or host live shows like this. Please also like and share this broadcast so others can benefit from the information we're about to share, either live or on the replay. Each of these shows is an opportunity to hear from people who are working to improve education in America any way they can. And this one is no exception. She is a superstar in this area. Lynn Taylor has been recognized by her peers as an expert in Common Core, career tech education, career pathways, like all the things you're hearing about now, career in college. Blah, blah. Yeah, you probably want to hear from her to, you know, gut check that against what the supposed experts are telling you and the educrats are telling you. Um, she is also carrying on the mission of someone I admire so much, Charlotte Isabrit, who really tried to expose corruption decades ago. And tragically, we didn't listen. So we have people like Lynn to carry the torch. And I hope, I hope to be another disciple in that effort. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming Lynn Taylor. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> Hi, Deb. Thank you so much for this honor to be with you. And I tell you what, Charlotte was such an iconic woman. And we need so many, many Charlottes in every state, in every school district, because I'm going to tell you what, she was a formidable woman. And I just am in awe of everything that she did to help warn us. And, you know, you're right. A lot of people didn't listen, but a lot of people are listening now. And that's where that's we can true. absolutely affect the most change. For those of you who aren't familiar with her, I would encourage you to Google her name, um, to read things she wrote, to look at some of the recordings that we are privileged to have of her speaking, um, listen to what she has to say. And then look at the dates mm -hmm. and then look around. Mm -hmm. Right, Lynn? Yeah, absolutely. I tell you what, this this whole thing has been a plot for over a hundred years. And we are now seeing that plot come to fruition that many people who have died either fought to fight it or fought to keep it going. And so we've seen it successfully succeed in doing exactly what it's done, which is dumbing us down and making our students of all ages into failures so that they can be controlled by a government who could give a fig about them. Now, when, when, I, well, maybe we'll get to that in a second. I, I know there are people in the audience who are going to hear that and say, but why to what end and all this? Okay. okay. Um, but the, I, I, I want you to give us a little bit of background on mm -hmm. you personally. So, okay. you know, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. And then I mm -hmm. want you to kind of arrive at the place where you tell people, you know, like why, like, what was that first thing? My light bulb say, moment. Like, uh -huh. what, yeah. Your aha uh -huh <laughs> moment that made okay. you say like, I okay. gotta do something. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's see here. Uh, we made the choice as a family to homeschool back in the 90s. OK, so I've got 23 years of private education experience teaching, teaching my own children, teaching others in uh, like minded co-op settings, being a state leader, being a conference speaker. And so as I was building all that up. Um, it was just amazing because I went to a support group leaders because a uh, meeting because I took my uh, role as a leader in mentoring other families very, very seriously. And I mean, I was going to do a really, really good job because I'd been blessed to be able to do this with my family. And I saw others who were doing it as well. And at that point in time, Deb, we were able to, um, as, as time progressed, we were able to stay out of the system. 
But then things started creeping up like dual enrollment or early college or all these other apprenticeships or all these other things. And homeschoolers were starting to get their head turned around just a little bit to like, oh, maybe the system isn't so bad. So when I went to a leadership meeting and there were some old magazines and by old, I mean like maybe two or three months old. And this was back in 2008, 2009. There were two articles that I read about the push for global common core, not American common core, global common core and all the things that entailed uh, that was woven into it. And so I read that and I'm like, well, I cannot keep my mouth shut. I have to warn people. And then the second article was how it had already started to infiltrate homeschooling. So I knew as toxic as the and corrupt as the, the public system was by then, if it had already started to infiltrate then, Deb, it was only a matter of time for us to be able to truly save our families from in a total the usurpation of the family. And through the Every Student Succeeds Act, that is precisely what we're seeing happen right now to the discredit of, of, of every family out there. This is not meant just for public school students. This is meant for every child, every family across this nation well, to be- Well, the word go global. It's not even just right. across this nation. Right. It's, it's all. Yeah, because it's rooted in the United Nations. And that's precisely it. And we can thank not just Bill Gates, but you've got the Carnegie's, the Rockefellers. You've got Kaiser Permanente, the CDC. You have so many federal agencies that have helped bring this to fruition. This is why it's been over 100 years, dear, to bring this all together, to bring forth the nanny state controlled indoctrination being passed off as skill based education. But yet it's also being sold as, oh, well, honey, we still have school choice. Well, no, really, you don't. And I can tell you how. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're going to get to that in a little more detail. Right. But I want to stop here for a moment because sure. I get I am 100% sure that anybody who's watched to this point is now saying, but why would they do that? Like, why would all of these people want to be part of a global common core? And why would people at the top, you know, want our kids to be stupid? And why would this and why would that? Now, if if you'll indulge me, I want to give sure. my theory and then you being the expert, sure. tell me if I'm get hitting anything. Okay. 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 One of the things that I, as a student of American history, I was an American studies major, so I dove deep mm -hmm. into the everything, using, reading primary documents, Federalist right. paper, all that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that struck me, even as an 18, 19, 20 year old, is the uniqueness. I've traveled all over the world. I've lived in Europe. Um, and mm -hmm. I, it kept coming back to me, America is unique. America in all the world and all the world's history is mm -hmm. unique in this one respect, that we were the first nation in the history of mankind to recognize an individual's right period, that there is such a thing as an individual separate from their state or their government, and that that individual has inalienable rights, endowed by their creator, whatever you believe, whatever created you, you're endowed by those at birth, nobody gave them to you. And those that were iterated in the Bill of Rights are just actually, in my opinion, just a few of them, but you know, that we're the first country. Right. And we are still, to date, the only country that has preserved them as long as we have, as faithfully as we have, and, and and not so great. I mean, I have a lot of complaints, but we still, compared to Canada, right. compared to right. some other places that claim to be free, they claim to build off of our model, who absolutely do not have free speech. So in that uniqueness, right. that and we were warned by the founders, if you do not teach this, mm -hmm. exactly as we're explaining it to you, if you do not teach this, pass it on as a value, uphold it, celebrate it, cherish it, you will lose it. You are always only one generation away from you losing it. So I right. firmly believe that we are now about three or four generations past the point where anybody gave a fig about passing it on, teaching it faithfully mm -hmm. at all. We now do this extremely surface, like utilitarian view of rights when it matters, when it, when it works for us, etc. And right. we are now moving towards this kind of democracy, which we never were, where right. the mob decides, and of course. Who steers the mob? Whoever has the power of the pulpit, which at this point is media, the schools, and those are controlled by the government. So the, it's the right. oldest reason in the book, power. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And if you don't have people coming into power in p- positions of leadership who are even vaguely acquainted with the founding principles of the country enough to cherish them, never mind cherish them, right? we end up here. So that's my theory. Well, absolutely. And, you know, you're right about uh, a lot of that. But here's what people need to understand. We have been set apart on purpose. We have been unique on purpose. That is hated. It is hated to the point it must be destroyed. And it was decided eons ago when the United Nations set its charter, when the United Nations start accept, started accepting member states and we signed up lock, stock and barrel and we're still in it. It was determined at that point that the purpose had to be that every member state has to kowtow not to their individuality, not to their uniqueness, not to their gifts, not to the wonderful rich history that each of the member states has, but to a collectivism, sanitized and totally controlled, twisted system of democracy. Because you're right, we are a republic. We were founded as a republic and that's what worked. But we were also warned eons ago, Deb, if you settle for a two-party system, that will be your death knell. And that is what we have been. George Washington that's, told that's us. what we have been saddled with. Mm-hmm. We got rid of every other major party. And now if you don't have an R or a D on your jersey, well, oh my goodness, that's a bad thing because the R's are the good guys. And D's are the bad guys. Uh-uh. No, they are the same. It is the clean end of a turd. You cannot pick one up. It's going to be dirty either way. And the reason I say that in that vernacular, if you look at the corruption, if you look at the payroll, if you look at all the ties that go back to corrupting our nation while we're still in it, that our government is happily participating in, and our corporations have gotten in bed with the, the government as well, as well as the United Nations. That was the goal all along. And the sustainable development goals were cooked up to help fast forward. So when you say we've well, skipped a few generations, you're spot on. We absolutely have. And that's what's driving the narrative because we're all in this together and we all have to think alike and we all have to be concerned about the same things. And if we're not concerned about the same thing, then there's something wrong with us that must be controlled. Right. I can't imagine why they want to get in with the kindergartners and survey their mental health. Well, why and would you would they think want- we would have learned from history that allowing government access to the inside of your brain and to diagnose you with a mental health condition is a really, really bad idea. <laughs> but they're spending billions of our taxpayer dollars, and, and that's precisely what it, it is doing. If you look at the 2023 fiscal year Department of Health and Human Service budget, you will see a massive amount of money going towards school-based interventions, social and emotional learning, which we know is a train wreck from hell. We know that it it is absolutely everything that Charlotte and many others like her warned us about. And here's the kicker. Because of the Every Student Succeeds Act, Deb, when it said that all education had to be aligned to the same post-secondary ready to standards as laid out in the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, that little thing right there mandated not only what would be taught, but how it would be taught. And because you roped in a labor law that affects higher education as well as the free working world, you just aligned cradle to grave to a system that will not fit you, but that will they will force you into, because after all, you have to be a good worker bee for the status quo. And the reason I say that is that connects over to the other thing that the UN has foisted upon not only America, but the nation, and that's called STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. It is an acronym cooked up by the National Science Foundation, which is a non-government entity that receives taxpayer dollars. They were influenced by the United Nations to come up with a nice sounding term to throw at education. And the 2015 PCAST report that was given to President Obama said, 
we have to usher this in about the time of Common Core because the real agenda was STEM education for STEM people, for STEM jobs, for STEM economy, for the greater global good. Now, does that sound American to you, Deb? And that also sounds like a recipe for starvation and death <laughs> yeah. because you can't you, you you just can't live where everybody's doing STEM. And not only that, mm -hmm. um, th they make it into a religion like STEM. Yeah, oh, now, yeah. now, now we have scientism. We don't have actual science. Right. Science is a tool. It's a process. It's a it's a way of looking right. at the world and getting answers to questions. The only reason, you know, we we continue to have things to study is that somebody previously was wrong or didn't know something. Well, so, you think, yeah, you would think that's right. But if you go back and you look, at, I think it is a 1948 document by UNESCO. And I've done uh, when I was part of the Liberty Bells for this one particular broadcast that I'm talking about, we do several podcasts and we do it every Monday and then we have a Saturday night special. But on one of our specials, we highlighted this particular UNESCO document, Deb, because in the in the fine print, it gave UNESCO, which let's remember the E stands for education across the globe and America is a lock, stock and barrel member of UNESCO. Um it said we have the right and the duty to manipulate the science to fit United Nations needs and goals. That right. little sentence right there is still in existence. Well, you know, and there will still be people in the audience, mm -hmm. Lynn, who will say, OK, but. I still don't get what the worst thing in the world is about that. Why wouldn't we want to be part of making things better across the world? And why wouldn't we want to partner with other nations for sustainable goals and to save the planet? Because it's not American derived. It, it pees on the constitution. It takes away your rights. I mean, come on, UNESCO is the same uh, same entity that just uh, last year put out a document that children had a human right to access to the Internet. And because UNESCO was in charge of that across the board, it didn't matter what your member state or America or France or wherever said, here are the parameters we want. No, because it was tied into this. These are the things you have to adhere to. These are the data standards you have to adhere to because the data is the cash cow that feeds off your child, your adult, your young person, anyone who's involved in any sort of education, be it from cradle to grave. Data is the cash cow that feeds this monster. And that's what's not okay about it because there was nothing in our constitution that said, we the people will stand for being data raped because that is what this is. It gave us the right to, uh, oh, no, it secured the right, did not give us the right. It secured the right for life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Right. When you are secure under the blessings of liberty. Right. When, when you are under a government controlled system, be it education, healthcare, whatever, you are not living your life. You are not pursuing your happiness and you are certainly not free. And you know what else? I, you're so right. And I love the way you put that, you know, it's like, you're just not free. Yeah. But for those skeptics out there, I would still say this because there are people who say, well, the constitution isn't perfect. And why do the constitution dead white guys? Here's what I would say to them. Even if you don't think you need these freedoms, I don't want to own again, whatever you don't want them. You think the greater good is more important, et cetera. You're still relying on the virtue of the people in charge of UNESCO and the UN, and you are deciding that these people who are in many cases more arbitrarily chosen for really corrupt reasons by people a world away who have no appreciation for you personally, never mind your culture, your values, look at member states they support that will lock someone up who's gay, that will tell a woman she does have to remain pregnant, that will tell a woman she has to cover her face, uh, or cover her whole body, she can't learn to read, etc. Okay, they're member states too. So you're relying on the virtue of the people at the tippy top of that chosen by those people to decide what your children, your precious babies mm -hmm. should learn and not just learn, but become. Absolutely. The life they're going to lead is being decided 
by those people. So even if you think that our founders were not perfectly virtuous men, because some of them owned slaves and they made mistakes. Right. And on the right. Well, they were human. Like us. Compare and contrast, please. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And, and because they keep acting like somehow because something's global, because something is bigger or has more members or has, you know, more of the appearance of unity, that it's virtuous, that it is good. And it's this the is the fallacy, though. That is yes, bandwagon fallacy in play. Just because, okay, 50 million people can believe a lie, Deb, That's but right. it's still a lie. That's it right. doesn't make it a truth because so many people buy into it. And this is one of the dangers that we're seeing coming up with our midterms where education mm -hmm. is, is uh, on, on Simone's platform or on the ballot through bonds. And it, it's a train wreck if you go into that voting booth thinking, well, just because someone's an R, they're right. And the D's are bad when it comes to education. If you look at at the, the documentation, the legislation, if you look at the platforms, if you look at every the, the funding streams, you will find they are not opposite of each other. They can't be. Right. They're connected by the same super lobbyists, the super PACs. They're controlled by the same corporations. It, it is absolutely sickening that our legislators do not write their own legislation. It is right. sickening they do not stand for their constituents, but the corporate uh, greed. No, they sponsor bills that are written by lobbyists, Absolutely. lawyers and lobbyists, Absolutely. all of whom are privately paid for. And I, then the other thing is people say, but it was an NGO or it was a nonprofit that did it. I'm like, Who a nonprofit arm of a profit corporation in most but, cases. And the government funds a lot of the NGOs when they have no constitutional basis to do That's so. Correct. Thank Chiefly you. Chiefly among them, the National Science Foundation, which has run over 70 years, I believe it is, of just absolute poppycock when it comes to, as you said, true science. Uh, and the reason why science went to hell in a handbasket, well, you would have to go all the way back to uh, the Renaissance because supposedly that's when everyone woke up and said, oh, look at all this other knowledge. No, because what happened was science, actually, if you go back and you read the scriptures, okay, science was there. It was used by the early science. It was used by those who were investigating science. They wanted to better understand and appreciate God and creation. And that's how science was born. But it wasn't until the Renaissance that the secularism decided to, well, we don't need God. God didn't create the world. So therefore, we don't need to understand his creation. We're just going to go out here. And that's when that kind of science took off. That is right. the science, the secular humanism. That is the science that the UN has embraced and embedded in 17 of the Sustainable Development Goals, which every major and minor city across the United States has said, oh, come on down. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get on the bandwagon because after all, that's the way we're going to save the planet. Well, the... The, the problem, I think, is that when you also had not just the, the, the Renaissance, but you also have a Reformation. Absolutely. And so when, the, when religion stopped being directly connected to the state, when the, when the faithful finally said, no, we're not going to be a tool, we're not going to be used to control people, and that you're going to like hide behind the Bible to like basically take right. things over and run people's lives, then you also had that kind of, um, that, that push to learn more, whatever. Now, I think... Right. To, to my secular audience, and I, I'm a member of that, um, okay. I would say simply that whether you whether you believe in scripture or the Bible or whatever right. or not, the fact right. remains that government, people with the guns, people right. with the power are never going to want competition from mm -hmm. anything that believes in something other than them. They're still going to want right. total control. So whether it's faithful people going to pursue, secular, you know, it doesn't that matter. Purpose, whether yeah. it's even... Galileo, okay, like right. you know, saying, like, hey, you're wrong. Oh no, that's not allowed. So whoever's right. empowered, whatever they're using is there. So what I've seen, Lynn, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that the people in power now have created 
minus the spiritual component, minus right. the, anything supernatural, they've created their own version of a religion oh, called yeah. Satanism. They've created, oh, yeah. and then subsects, of course, like the gender mm -hmm. theory, all of these right. are, are grounded not in actual science. They're grounded in faith. It's right. just a, like, I want it to be true. Ergo, it's true. It serves my political purposes. Ergo, it's true. There but that's is part of that. That's that's part of that quasi critical thinking that's being right. handed down. And again, you're it right. It doesn't matter new if religion it's or not. This is yeah. coming after you. And again, you bring up the valid point. Doesn't matter what you believe. Do you want to be controlled? Do you want your inherent rights? stripped because that's precisely what the game plan is and that's what's so dangerous about school choice that's right that's also to me how you can tell like the the faithful from the like you know ersatz is the people who, who i know who really believe they're not interested in as mortals controlling what anyone else does in life they're really not interested they would they might minister they might want to minister to people they might want to witness to people they might want to preach to mm -hmm. people but they're not actually interested in having that legislative power over people's lives to tell them this is the way you must be they don't want a theocracy because they know perfectly well that the person who gets who would want that role who wants to make of themselves sort of a god on earth could turn around and, and deny their religious freedom so that's one of my little litmus tests is kind of like how far mm -hmm. do you want to take this and the person that says i want to put it you know into the government schools and i want the government to mandate that we pray and, do, and i'm like no, thank you. But the person who says, no, I'm okay with separation because I don't want my faith corrupted by these people who are looking for just power. They've made of themselves gods. And right. if there's one thing I do remember from my religious teaching is that's a no, no. So <laughs> you're yeah. not supposed to do that. And this well, is what I'm seeing. Um, right. And for all of their protestations about how they're atheists, I disagree. They just have a different God. Well, and that's that's precisely it, because, you know, an atheist does have belief because it takes belief to say, OK, there is no God. Right. So they, they even have faith. They just don't choose to use it in that particular way. But as far as the corruption in education and school choice, I know that was one of the things that we wanted to, to bring up because we are yes. so close to midterms. Now, yes. one of the things that Charlotte had done. And if you go to Deliberate Dumbing Down, that is her website. I okay, just put the yeah. link in here. I'm going to go ahead and, and, uh, and if you go it. there. You can also now. There's an alternate site because sometimes the Deliberate Dumbing Down is tried to be, uh, you know, removed from the internet. But there is an, an alternative one called American Deception, I believe it is. That is run by her son, who is still very much alive. Um, but here's the thing: Charlotte had found with Sam Blumenthal. He was a, a, a legend in his own time as well for education. There were a group of those like-minded people that back in the 90s, I think it was like 94, they put together a research manual on what was called Goals 2000. And if mm -hmm. you'll you know, if you know anything about educational history, you know that was the movement that combined education and labor because we needed a workforce ready society. Okay. Yeah, which was the framework which STEM has built itself off of or career pathways or career tech education. It's all aligned to common core. Okay? And unless anyone thinks this isn't real, there's the link. Yeah. It, it's real. Educate Go America ahead. Act. It yeah. became law in March of 1994. Right. It absolutely did. So they put together, I think it's like a 700 page research manual, Deb. And mm -hmm. in the manual, I cannot give you the page number, but I just know that in the manual, I think it's like chapter nine, it exposed the Republican hatched plot, the conservative hatched plot. Notice I didn't say the liberal. Notice I didn't say the Democratic. That's right. The liberals and the Democrats came on board later. Okay. Right. But right. the hatched plot was to take School, use your child as a cash widget, have the money attached to the child. Follow the child. The money yeah. should follow the child. And it everybody, should. oh, Corey, yes. oh, you're my hero, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. Because that will give you so much more freedom. Honey, if you, you have 100% freedom, 
You cannot have more than 100%. It is mathematically impossible. And that is not common core math. That is common sense, good old fashioned American, I learned it way back when, percentage. You cannot go over 100% on your freedoms. You just can't. So we were going to attach the money to the child. And then that way, the school could follow where the child was going. Because if you'll remember, back in the late 80s, what did Lamar Alexander, good old Republican from Tennessee, get up and say before everyone in the room of the National Governors Association meeting in the Midwest? There'll be a day when we go to the hospital and we find mama and the baby and we bring them education and social services and we follow that family. We embrace that family throughout their entire life. Now, Deb, that's what the school choice, the education savings accounts, the school choice misnomer are hiding is that it's that tracking. And again, it's not through physical tracking, although that could happen. No, it's going to be through the data because the assessments drive the curriculum. And if you don't measure up on the assessment, then you can't get the credential. And here's what happens with, with the common core aligned work skill based crap. If you can't get that credential, you can't get a job. And if you can't get a job, Deb, how are you going to feed your family and pay your bills? You can't. So who do you turn to? The government. Because well, after all, we're here to help. And and what is so sickening to me mm-hmm. is the arguments they use mm-hmm. to push school choice. First of all, yeah. they demonize people like Lynn and me and say that we are in league with the unions and we we support government schooling and we don't really want to get rid of government schooling because if we did, we would see that this is incrementalism and this is a step in the right direction. No, and that is so a they, big old BS and horse hockey moment. Yeah, they use arguments like it will force the public schools to compete. No, it won't at mm-hmm. all. No, no, it did, won't. This is a labor union wet dream. I'm sorry for the you, graphic do you description. Want, no, no, is. that's okay. No, because it fits. But here's what Charlotte and all those others in this research manual said. Not only was it conservative hatched, and now we have every liberal and Democrat and everybody in between on this, because after all, it's going to get me votes because it's going to make me look like I'm a, a protector of your family. Because if you put me in office and I'm backing up school choice and ed savings accounts, I'm going to protect your family, Deb, from the big, bad, mean government that's going to, you know, take your child and and do all kinds of horrible things. No, what they found was the whole goal behind school choice. Use the money as the widget. Get the families hooked on the, the government cheese. Okay, when you start doing that you start not needing representation. So guess what? Your school boards shift from elected to government appointed. What happened to your right to vote? It just went. It doesn't stop at school board elections. The entire goal behind school choice, and this is what is so wicked about it, and this was one of the things that I promised Charlotte I would carry on before she passed or since she's passed, I have done my gut level best to do. And that is school choice is tied to a national federation of education through the Department of Education. Its goal is to shut down homeschool, private, parochial, hybrid, uh, magnet, charter, any of those outside the public system schools. The purpose is to shut those down, rebrand them as public, thus putting it under the government's thumb through the Department of Education. Of course it is. And it will be federally mandated. Now, your right to vote at a local level will be destroyed. How far up the chain that will go we have not seen. That's the part that I have to continue to research, but we know at the local level, it will be either destroyed or heavily mutilated. Do you really 
whether you believe in God or not, do you really want to see your constitutionally guaranteed right to vote disappear? How? It's tied to taxation. And when yeah, well, the, the thing is, yeah. we have to be extra careful because the yeah. Constitution is actually mute right. on a a guaranteed right to vote, period. Absolutely. All it does is say you have equal access to vote if voting is permitted. If so it is, each yeah. state, we still have federalism, and this yeah. is how it's going to happen. It will be the domino effect where you're going mm -hmm. to see it first in the states that, and, you know, California will be, you know, like, some of oh, the states yeah. will just be the test markets for it, and people won't fight right. it. But um, they'll be, they'll first start restricting things or what they, they won't even restrict. They'll simply say it's not necessary. Things right. that you used to vote right. for, you aren't going to vote for. Right. They Absolutely. will be appointed. Absolutely. And so the number of things that you actually have a voice in will just dwindle and dwindle and dwindle locally until such time as it's determined that, you know, voting in those national elections. Who needs I mean, it? Who needs, Who needs it, it? right? Yeah, We've got absolutely. everything covered here and we're all on the same standard anyway. Right. And federalism will just go the way of the dodo bird. So well, here's, here's the thing. You're right. It's not a guaranteed right in the Constitution. We do have that right set aside. But I do know if you look at the, and we did a webinar on this, on how it's tied through the, the taxation influences elections. We know that because it makes the dist it helps make the districts. So we know that it's tied through taxes. And this is one of the things that she also tied in was you think you're paying property tax now that goes into the public system. Wait till these appointed school boards really step it up. Forget the Marxism planks. Go look at the global Silicon Valley's 15 plank system. Right. In the middle, my dear, Embrace Common Core, embrace STEM, eradicate local school boards and parents' voices. If that is not a precursor to what we're seeing now, if that's not the smoking gun, the big red arrow that says, look here, I don't know what is. But yet all that research that Sam and Charlotte and, and others have done to bring this to light, is being covered up by minions like DeAngelis and Ferris and all these other idiots out there who are going, oh no, you have to have money follow the child because that's where your freedom is. No, that's where the carrot to control is. Thank you. And I've been saying that. I've been, I, I started polite. I started polite. I well, started I by asking questions. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted answers. And I was, I started, no, I haven't been at this as long as you. So, yeah. you know, so no, I, I did start out nice with him or, or both I of them. I started out nice and I started out saying, you know, okay, well, this is all well and good, but you know, what are you going to do now that COVID happened? See, pre-COVID, mm -hmm. I was a little naive, right. like a lot of Americans. And I, and I was less naive than most Americans, but I was still more naive than I am today. Okay. And after I saw what people allowed to occur, and the mm -hmm. violations of rights that people just stood mm -hmm. back and allowed and not only allowed, but cheered on. Oh, yeah. That was like it for me. I said, okay, I don't live in the America I thought I lived in. And oh, yeah. I'm not familiar with my fellow Americans. I thought I knew y'all, yeah. but no, I guess I don't, especially yeah. right here in North Carolina. So I, I then went to, after that, I started getting super skeptical and I did mm -hmm. more research and I did more research and I started seeing some things like things that you've seen. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to him, I said, okay, how are you going to prevent this from becoming just another grab for power. How is this not the government following the student into the private sector school? OPS, the private schools are already bending the knee to the mm -hmm. bad ideas. And I've just found out they've been doing it for years. I looked oh, at my yeah, own alma absolutely. mater and I was disgusted. Yeah, and, absolutely. Because and again, so, that mandate in yeah. every student succeeds act, Right. That was the death knell to true school choice where mom and dad could say, OK, I'm going to put them in private school and we're going to get a top notch education or I'm going to put them over here in homeschool or I'm going to put them in any of these other things. No, because why? All education. And most people, when they hear that, Deb, they think, oh, okay, so that means all, all education. That means public K through 12. Okay, so if I just go here to the private school, I'll be fine. No, if you look at the plethora of research I have done on my blog, commoncordiva.com, you type in school choice, you will get hundreds of pages of articles on the, the absolute 
horse hockey job that has been done. If you go back and look at some of the uh, private school articles, I have one. There was this mom. Um, I changed her name to protect her family. Sarah was the name I changed it to. But she had contacted me and said, look, I pulled my kids out of the public school. I put them in this great Catholic school. And, you know, they're they're real doing what I think is really good and they seem to be getting along. And then, you know, they come home and one of the backpacks falls open and I see the Common Core state standards branded yep. at the bottom. That's right. And she goes, we're paying hand over fist. The same education. For the same. And I'm like, honey, exactly. And so I detailed for everyone who thought they had escaped, I detailed for them where to look, how to look, what to ask for. And right. then I found that the Catholic Church had its own Common Core initiative set up. And David Coleman, of all people, from the college board, who Oh, is, he's the worst. <laughs> he was one of their keynote speakers and yeah. champions in That's this right. particular initiative that they set forth. They have adapted to the, the STEM as well and made their own version called STREAM, which entails science, technology, reading, writing, arithmetic, all right, engineering, arts, and math. Yeah, they won't be done until they've captured it all. Absolutely. And, you know, it's what I, what I, what Corey called me dangerous. He said that my ideas were dangerous. Well, they and should then, be. And then henceforth has his motive, his motive dealing with me. He hasn't blocked me, but his mm -hmm. motive dealing with me is whenever I say anything on my own wall that's negative about school choice, or I take anyone to task who like I retweeted something of his where mm -hmm. he talked about how great it was that they extended the deadline for parents to apply to get what was allegedly their money back, right. To get the, the, the money following the students. And then he six Colleen, you know, who Colleen is right. Haran Sitch or whatever her name is. She mm -hmm. works at Cato. They sick her on me to say like, I don't understand this. Like what you, you have deadlines to for all kinds of things. And I'm like, well, Cato is not Hello, really is anyone home here inside? on this issue. Cato is just Cato is one of the originators. Yeah, Heritage, and I, I freedom, said it's, freedom I said works. If it's their money. Yeah. If it's their money, then what? Why the why this whole like application and the deadline and all of these? Why do you things? have what to give it to, to the government to give it back? Why not just take your money That's, and go spend it? As well, well, it's not really their money, and you know it. And I'm like, well, then stop telling parents. That it is. It's a government subsidy. It's like, well, they it's already collected the dollars. And I'm like, so that's Cato's position. We seed the we seed the ground. The libertarian yeah. world now, the libertarian position of the libertarian think, think tank is now give it up, folks. It's over. There's no hope of having your freedom back. We have to settle for the fact that government controls education and just pretty please yeah. pray they'll give us a few money crumbs. And then they go and lie to people, supposed libertarians, telling yeah. you that money equals access, money no, equals no. quality. Money equals control by someone That's other all it than is. you. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. Arizona has been trotted out as a model state with their universal school choice education no, it's not. savings accounts. Okay, universal is a dangerous word because you just annihilated every school choice out there. And yet That's you're right. going to say, okay, mom and dad, now you have $1,000 to go buy A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Because there's a list, honey. It's not, right. okay, Deb, I'm going to give you $1,000. You go spend it how you want to on your kids for their That's education. Right. No, there are, there are, List for curriculum, list for resources. So if you think your freedom is going to be there to choose how to spend that government money, no, no, and no. And the reason I know this is because back in the day, uh, Alaska, you know, mm -hmm. ice frontier, icy, can't get anywhere for months at a time, right? My. Well, they came up with the, the idea or someone came up with the idea for them. Well, you know, we have all these kids who can't get into the school because of the frozen tundra. And, da, 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 and I'm not making fun of them. I'm making fun of the government officials. OK, so we'll solve the problem for them. We'll give them money to send to them so that they can go 
augment their homeschool. Now, this was targeting homeschoolers, okay? Right. What happened? Several people. Oh, this is a godsend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Now I can go get those piano lessons for Susie. Or now I can go get that whatever curriculum for Johnny. What they didn't expect came in the mail a week later. Over 800 pages of state assigned assignments and curriculum that they had to intersect into their home school. Mm -hmm. So the freedom to teach as the families wanted got derailed because if right. you didn't finish those over 800 pages and it wasn't just a one-time shipment my dear this kept coming if you did not keep those pages fulfilled you had to pay the money back yeah so it's not even just you got to forego the money you guys you got to pay it back did you hear yeah. what she said You've got yeah. to repay it. Does that sound familiar? And if you don't done do this it before in other you, programs with the government, right? if you don't do it through penalties, you will do it through taxation. That's because correct. it is not free. Nothing that our government gives us ever has given us. Once is it's free. in their hands. And as I've mentioned, I want to, I put this up here, by the way, because I want right. people to understand that when Corey's out there going, isn't it awesome? We're overwhelming the system and they're just, everyone's applying. Isn't it so great? How, oh, yeah, really? It's so great. There's only 447 private schools in all of Arizona. Yeah. Where are these kids going to go? Oh, that's right. They're going to end up having to take that money and try to homeschool. Except guess what? They didn't all really want to homeschool, right? They right. think so a lot of those people think that homeschooling was virtual schooling during COVID. That's not homeschooling. Well, see, so the true, made, th that's right. This true definition of homeschooling has been so skewed on purpose, though, right? Because true homeschooling was you didn't need a government assigned curriculum. You did right. not need any sort of state assigned assessment. You really, really didn't. I mean, trust me, I was in it over 20 years. I know what true homeschooling is and right. hybrid homeschooling during a pandemic homeschooling where you're taking home state assignments or school assignments. That's no, that's not homeschooling. That's just Home educating it. That's just well, teaching your kids at home or school. That at home is or something. right. Absolutely. That's bringing the school, the system into your home and don't think it stops right. at the curriculum. It is through those devices because again, right. remember data, the data hardest harvesting is the cash cow that feeds the system. And right. so they're going to get it through either the assessments, which are totally online, or they're going to get it through snooping through uh, the computer when your child brings it home. Now, I've had people argue with me, oh, Lynn, you have no idea what you're talking about because, you know, after all, that computer doesn't snoop on me. I said, oh, really? You want to talk, <laughs> you want to, talk to the parents okay. who, have okay. had, who have had their bank accounts compromised because a school assigned a computer was brought home. You want to talk about the families who have been compromised because their privacy has been invaded to the point of things that should never have been broadcast being broadcast. And, right. oh, I'm smoking dope. Yeah, right. The, well, the other thing that people forget is that let's say these people get these little ESA cards. Mm -hmm. I keep accidentally calling them EBT cards because really that's pretty much what they are. <laughs> yeah, you actually yeah. have more choice of grocery store and food than you're going to have of this. Right. What people don't realize already about Arizona, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, is in the FAQs, you will find in the fine print that it says, if you are planning to use your ESA funds to homeschool, you will not file a homeschool affidavit. In other words, right. you will not be recognized as a homeschooler right. legally by the state. You're going to be under their, you know, like they're going to have the mm -hmm. same testing mm -hmm. re requirements that the people who are in the schools have and any regulations that, and they'd even say this is to protect other homeschools who don't take no, the money from regulation. And that's a lie because no, first of all, 90% of people aren't going to read those things. The 10% right. the, the who do are only going to be the 10%. And you know how easy it is in a mob run situation mm -hmm. to tell those 10% we're sending you the money anyway. How many of you got a check in the mail if you have kids from the government for COVID that you didn't ask for? Yeah. How many of you got one? You had no way to send it back. You got it. There it was. Now it's in your hot little hand. And you're like, uh, well, what am I going to do, right? Then yeah. after the fact, you got a note from the IRS going, oh, you know, if we did our math wrong, you might have to pay that back. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. they're going to start doing little tricky things like that to homeschoolers who try to fly below the radar and do it completely on their own, or they're going to co-opt and control their vendors. So the people creating their yeah. curriculum, because we do use curriculum, they are yeah. the people who do our online lessons, the place, our co-ops, all the things, our yeah. private education services that we use are going to be told you either take all of the homeschoolers, even with the ESA funds, or you take none of them. Yeah. Like they did with Medicare and Medicaid and right. chip, everything else. Uh, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, this doesn't even bring into account, Deb, those who will abuse the system. Because, you know, the first time this was trotted out. Yeah. Okay. If you look at the amount of money that is supposed to be on those, those uh, ESA cards, it's quite a chunk of change. Well, I could go buy a car. I could go do all kinds of stuff because after all, it's free money that was given to my family. And if this helps me get to point A to point B, but guess what? Buying a car is not on that list. But trust me, someone's going to try to abuse the system. Now, you asked me why Arizona? Why was Arizona trotted out as the, the, the uh, example state? Because Arizona has institutions like Goldwater Institution, which fully backs school choice. Of course it does. You also have senators who are tied in and senators and representatives and universities who are tied into lock, stock and barrel, global Silicon Valley, United Nations. This was not done by accident. This was a state that is being trotted out as an example of how well we can lie, how well we can deceive, and how well we are going to control you by the time it's done. But oh yeah, let's switch over to the East Coast. Virginia, Gary Youngkin, oh honey, he was right, put yeah. into office on purpose to he again- put a data mining expert in mm-hmm. to his education, mm-hmm. uh, his did. board of education. I called it before he was ever elected. If you put that man in the government position, the governor's position, and yeah, what did he bring? School choice. And what is he doing? Oh, let's look at Maryland because Maryland just dumbed down their standards to where a good good portion of the workforce doesn't even have to have a high school diploma anymore. Go look at the U.S. Army. Go look at the U.S. military. Oh, yeah, we just relaxed the standards so you don't even have to have a high school diploma anymore. <laughs> I just, you know, and, and people have said to me, okay, so what's your plan, Deb? What do we do, Deb? I know. You're busy so, and school, so what's, your what's your option? I know. Me? I know. They I'm like, always I'm sorry. You. I, you know, <laughs> like, I, so that's my responsibility, too. I am pointing out corruption to you. I'm telling you that these people are stealing and they're lying and they're mm-hmm. setting you up to be controlled. And now you want me to tell you the option? The option to me is simple. Exercise your rights. Yeah. Exercise your right to leave now while you still can, while the exit door is open. If we could get a critical mass of people to use mm-hmm. the choice they have, they have a choice right now to say, I don't want this. I'm not applying for the money. I'm leaving the school. I am real homeschooling. I'm not going to participate in your reindeer games. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Become ungovernable. Yeah. It's the only chance you have. I don't have a magic bullet. It's a one family at a time solution. Because they have closed so many exit doors. And what I keep telling people is, if you you don't have to believe me, go look at the landscape. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Go look with your own eyes. Tell me what how great education is after government got more and more involved. After Carter founded the, the, the Federal Department of Education, did things get better or markedly worse? Okay. No, got After worse. ESSA, did things get better or markedly worse? After we switched in 1983 from a knowledge-based curriculum to a standards-based curriculum, did things get better or worse? Everything, ha- all the data is there on their own government websites, on their own sites. They're right. still telling Absolutely. somewhat now, of the truth. Right. It's now. horrible. And that's not by accident, first of all. And right. even if it were by accident, you would expect at this point, after since 1983, we're talking now about 40 years. Okay, yeah. so we we since then you would expect somebody somewhere on on either side of the aisle to say, I, I think government needs a timeout from doing this education thing because you know what I've never seen in any reform package, any acknowledgement that maybe it was their fault. Maybe no, they will not. They will look fault. at. Okay, they will they will take Arnie Duncan's stance that it's all the suburban mom's fault. 
for, for the, the way that education is, you know. But again, he was the one who also said, you know, by the time they're in second grade, we'll be able to tell exactly what they're going to do in life. So that's why they're going after kindergartners, not just for mental health, but for all kinds of di diabolical things. But here's what I would say, okay? You want to affect change. Okay, fine. Start showing up at your school board meetings. Start asking what the heck is going on. Start demanding, not asking, start demanding where your tax dollars are going. And you know what? If we had a mass movement of people suddenly stop paying taxes for education, yes, I realize that means that we all might be in a little bit of a situation because it comes out of our property tax. But Deborah, I would happily lose my house. I would happily lose my house if I had to so that I could make sure that the kids in my neighborhood didn't have to go to a school where they got indoctrinated instead of educated. And if we got a mass movement of that, if we got a mass movement of people demanding their congressmen and women to repeal Every Student Succeeds Act, the Higher Education Act, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, all these unconstitutional laws all it's all unconstitutional you guys we, absolutely it's yes. very it's clear that the federal government is not to establish a, a right. state curriculum and they've done right. it uh, absolutely but you know you have uh us code 20 section 1232a which prohibited the federal government from in any way shape form or fashion having anything to do with education all the way down to technical uh, aspects. But what have they done? They've done it. So the first thing you do is not shut down the Department of Education because it's going to scatter like cockroaches because I have exposed the plan for the other agencies to take what would have been left of ed should it close down tomorrow. No, you start with getting rid of the taxation that funds it. Second step, repeal Every unconstitutional law, I don't care how much it hurts because our states have gotten so used to being on the government nipple, they cannot exist on their own. So taxation, repeal, then you prudently go in, shut it down. You get all the tentacles out of the other agencies and you give it back to the people. And that, my dear, in a mass movement would solve our problem faster than anything else. Do we have well, people who will do it? I don't know. Well, I also will go so far as to say this on live, you know, YouTube. Right. If somebody comes to me next time and says, so you are on the same side right now as the people in the unions who want to end school. First of all, I don't believe they do. But let's no, suppose, don't. let's give them their argument that right. the people who support public schools don't want school choice, then I'm going to tell you right here and right now, yes, I guess that puts me on their side temporarily, strange bedfellows. Guess what? A lot of them oppose Common Core too, for different reasons than I opposed it. But here's the thing. If we at a minimum kept the, the kept this disease contained mm -hmm. in government's own system right. and didn't let it spread to the private sector and kept that money away from homeschooling and kept it away from the few independent schools that still exist that are right. desperately trying to survive Right. without having to compete with schools that are getting massive funding from school choice, then yes, I would like to contain the disease. I would well, like yeah. to block it off and quarantine it in the system that already exists. And if that means I support the status quo for the moment, so I can encourage parents to go to where we know the disease is, it's right here in the public schools, right. so they can mm -hmm. fight, then yes, that's what I support. I oppose school choice. I've said it now. Here you go. Go take the message out. Go forth. Deb Philman opposes school choice. And well, let Corey DeAngelis say that Deb Philman is anti-liberty and Deb Philman hates freedom and Deb Freedom doesn't want kids to have an escape from the poor neighborhoods. Deb hates the poors. Y'all who know me know better. Yeah. You know that is not true. Lynn knows it's not true. And right. Lynn obviously doesn't hate any of those people. We are just sick of the lies and the corruption and playing on your emotions and your fears right. to get That's you to it. believe that to support liberty you need to invite the government with you in your kid's backpack to your private that, school. That is not liberty. That is no, absolutely not. not liberty. Liberty is you have your child with their backpack going to your school, not a government assigned, not a government funded anything. Yes, I oppose a lot of these things. And you're right. Down through all my research, down through as many years as I've been doing this. Yes, for a time I've had to 
go hang out with folks I didn't necessarily agree with on anything else, but that's how we get things done. Doesn't right. mean that I'm going to go over here and camp out with them and become one of them. It just means for right now, I'm on that side. And because who knows, you might persuade some of them because what do we know about people who in their heart of hearts are truly liberal, right? I'm not talking leftist. I'm, I'm not talking Marxist. Right. I'm talking right. truly liberal is right. what we know about them is theoretically anyway, they don't like government control, at least well, they used it. to. That's and why I'm so, not at either main party anymore. That's right. Same, same. So I think you stand a better chance, at least in your local area, mm -hmm. of affecting some kind of change right there for that population containing this. If you scatter the people who care, because what's what do we know about the people applying for the school choice? They're dissatisfied with their school. They oh, care yeah. a lot about education. They mm -hmm. care a lot about their kids. Okay. They're, th they're the people that we, we need to be right. fighting the government corruption. I've called it Mount, mo Mount kill a momentum. What the okay. school choice thing is. Mm -hmm. We have momentum after COVID it's huge, but instead yeah. of leveraging that and keeping all that momentum directed towards the government monopoly and saying, kill this thing right. they're going no let's scatter it to the four winds we have a few let's parents throw it up like few glitter. Parents. there yeah. we go there we because go there. now we'll have two parents who care over at charlotte latin and we'll have a couple parents over here at this private school and and they're already outnumbered parents who care about curriculum are already massively yeah. outnumbered even at private schools mm -hmm. so we'll just disperse the momentum it'll die that's and right. And we'll have them by the gold. Good handcuff. little minion, won't you? Yes, you'll nod your head and say, Yes, I'd like it. Can I have another, please? They're begging for crumbs and then telling and then saying, It'll do for education what Netflix did for streaming services. And I'm like, Oh, please. Okay, okay, okay. Hang on, hang on. All right, you brought up a big point. Net, the, the, the dude behind Netflix wants to do what? Get rid of all the school boards. So, yeah, you want to embrace that theory, you go for it. But just remember, right. the dudes are paying. Bad more. analogy. Yeah. Really bad analogy. Yeah. And <laughs> a lot of their analogies are really, really bad. They're like, you know, you get to choose your grocery store. And I'm like, yeah, but there's no government feeding program. There's not, the government doesn't come to me yet the day I have a baby and say, oh, congrats, you have a baby. Here, we've enrolled you in the government feeding program. You'll be able to go to your zoned feeding place to pick up your formula where you then go, can I opt out and do breastfeeding? Sure, nope. no problem, but we're still going to collect your money for the feeding program to the point where now you're like, I really need, you know, so you yeah. have to choose. Do I want to use the money they're already spending of mine? Do I want to breastfeed? Breastfeeding's hard. Okay, I'll go over there. Uh-oh, my kid's allergic to the formula that the government has assigned to me. It doesn't work for my kid. Well, that's too bad. You can go get private formula, but you're going to have to spend extra. Oh, you know what? Would you like some formula money from the government? Uh, okay, but you know you have to buy it from our location. Da -da -da. No, we don't do that with food. We don't go ask permission to have some of our money back to go to our own grocery store. It's our money in our wallet. So it's right. a terrible analogy. Yeah, it absolutely is. All right, Deb, you have anything else for me, my dear? Well, I think we covered the what are we going to do about it? And I guess the what we're going to do about it is just oppose lies. Yeah. Right? Is that fair to, to say? Help folks understand why they should oppose it too. So yeah, um, if you need any information on that, feel free to reach out to me, commoncordiva.com. Uh, if you don't know how to get in touch with me, Deb can get in touch with me and I will be and happy follow to follow Liberty Bells. Yes, Liberty you Bells. Listen we did. Liberty Bells podcast. Yep. Please go there. The deliberate dumbing down link is up there pinned. Yeah. Yep. Um, please share the broadcast with others so they can listen on the replay. I will put this up as a podcast on Substack either later today or tomorrow. And Lynn, I cannot thank you enough for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to come in here and be dangerous with me. Well, you know, anytime you want to be dangerous again, I, I got your number and, and we can do it. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you to everyone who came today and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.